G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very, very good to see you. Today, we're going to compare, as quickly as possible, the Z50 versus the ZFC. Here they are. They're largely the same camera with actually the same lens on the front. But some of the biggest differences between these two cameras is the aesthetics. But we're going to go through the aesthetic side of it as well as the technical side of it. Now, right now here in Melbourne, we're still sitting in lockdown. We're in week two and who knows how long it's going to last. Let's hope I can get out to uh, do some shooting ASAP. All right, let's get into the comparison between the two. Now, as we kick off this video, I just want to let you know we are actually shooting in 4K on the ZFC on the silver and grey or silver and black version. It's right there, over there shooting us right now and it's shooting me on the 28mm which is a 42mm equivalent. Now that's making the frame considerably wider than what I'm used to, but I just thought I would show you what the difference is between my normal setup which is the 50mm or 50mm equivalent and what 42 looks like. It's quite different. We're going much wider than I'd normally go, a little bit lower than I would go, and we can actually see the microphone up there. And now that I've pointed it out to you, you're probably going to be annoyed by it the whole time. So I'm going to letterbox. Great, that's gone now, much better. So here it is, this is the ZFC doing what it does, shooting in 4K, we're in flat profile. It's pretty much the same settings that I have on the Z6. Flat profile, 4K, 24 frames per second, white balance set to be in this space with these lights that are set to daylight because I have daylight streaming in over here. Okay, so can the ZFC do as good a job as the Z6 in this sort of situation? I think absolutely yes, and there won't be much difference between the two. But let's get into comparing these two little guys. Let's literally start at the top. The tops of these cameras, yes indeedy. They are not the same and there are some significant differences between the two. Obviously the whole idea of the ZFC is to get yourself those retro dials on the top and we have exposure compensation, shutter speed and ISO all directly accessible via those dials. Whereas the Z50 simply has the usual manual aperture, shutter priority and program mode, and also your user modes. So that's one big difference, is not only that the dials are there, but you lose the capacity to access user custom modes from an exterior dial or button. Now, for some people that might be a big deal, I've started to use the user modes of late and I jump between my studio setting and my exterior settings and I jump between shooting video of people, which I have one setting for that, and I have a setting for video of things. I go from using face detect to not using face detect and so on and so forth. So that might be something of a problem for some people that you don't have those modes. Those modes obviously are still accessible via the menus. It's just not so quick to do it. And it's something I quite like using. Why are you buying this camera? A lot of people that are buying this camera may never use it for video at all. It all comes down to use case. Okay, so obviously there are some buttons and dial differences. Also, we can see here on the front is the function button. There's only one function button on the ZFC, but there are two on the Z50. And again, that comes down to personal preference and how you use the camera. Sometimes more is not more. If you don't use those buttons at all, then it's completely irrelevant. Next, from the exterior and very much from an ergonomic perspective, it is all about the grip. Clearly here, the Z50 has a massive grip to hold on to, and the ZFC is your traditional style. Holding them in my hand right now, you know what? 
you just sort of change the shape of your hand and how you do things. And I also think with a camera like this, you're much more inclined to actually maybe hold it with your left hand more often than with a camera like this where you can just spend the whole time holding it with your right hand. So it does promote a different style of usage, a different style of holding the camera, and I don't think that's such a big deal. Of course, uh, we do know that there is a grip available from Nikon that will just bolt onto the bot bottom here and make it similar but not the same. I'm yet to get my hands on one of those. I don't know whether I will until this thing has to be returned, but I do think it'll make a difference. I think with this camera, a lot of the weight will be held by my left hand and the right hand becomes more about the dials and the controls, which of course makes sense because there are. So it's just literally a different user experience. Then finally, from the external perspective, besides obviously looks, I certainly prefer the way the ZFC looks over the Z50. Either way, it's not a big deal. But here it is, uh, is the screen. So the biggest difference, of course, is the screen and the fact that we have a flippy screen. Although, although for those who don't know much about the Z50, the Z50 also has a flippy screen, but it's a flip down screen. Look at that. One's a flip down and one is a flip sideways. Clearly the flip sideways is easier when you're on a tripod. Nikon did provide a bracket where the tripod came out of here. You can see in the video that I made about the Z50 where I show this off. Here's a link, have a look. And it works fine, like it's not the end of the world, but if you forget that bracket, then I suppose you're in a little bit of trouble. So they both have flippy screens. Some people in my comments have been desperate for a flippy screen, and then others have been absolutely aghast that there's this style of flippy screen. I do think this style of screen is just probably not quite as tough as the other style. This style, I think, is just an extension of this, this version, which all the current Nikon cameras have, and then they've managed to just work it out how to get it to do that as well. I suppose because this thing is just so little, they can make it do that. But if you're a vlogger and you want the experience that every other flippy screen vlogging camera has, this is a massive change and this is a big deal for Nikon and I'm pretty pumped about it. One little last thing before we jump out of exterior things is the fact that there's actually the aperture screen here. Right here, there's an aperture screen that shows you what aperture you're on. That's just fun and cute. I don't know if anyone would care either way, but I like the fact that it's there. It's just, in a way, almost a cute little eccentricity about this camera. I'd love to talk about the connectivity differences on these cameras. Now, they're pretty similar in the fact that they both have three ports, and that is a microphone port, which we are using right now to be able to record sound fantastically over to the ZFC over there. And they have USB charging ports. They both have HDMI micro. Now, the only difference between these two is the USB. The Z50 has the older style of USB, which is the USB micro, whereas the ZFC has USB-C, which I far prefer. It's much easier to get the plug seated in the port correctly. And if it's a bit dark and it's hard to see things, the micro, both micro USB and micro HDMI can be quite difficult to seat whereas USB-C is much, much easier. Now, I just want to make an overall statement because both the Z50 and the ZFC both do have the HDMI micro. This is a plug that I don't love and I'm always worried that I'm going to break them. The other Z cameras have the HDMI mini, which is significantly larger and much stronger and I far prefer it. And obviously some cameras I think a number of Sony's and Canon's in their higher end, much more expensive cameras are now having full-sized HDMI ports, which is even cooler again. So something to think about with both of these cameras, I am using right now the HDMI micro to a screen right here, so I can just make sure that everything is working. And it works fine. You just have to be aware of it. 
My older uh, Sony a7R 3 has the same port. I just find it to be too small and too fragile. And a port that you might be like, oh, I wish it was there, is a headphone socket. There is no headphone socket in either the Z50 or the ZFC. Let's talk very quickly about video. And the video in the two cameras is pretty much the same. They both do up to 4K full frame DX, of course, up to 30 frames per second. And the only major difference right now between the two is the fact that you get face and eye detect in video on the ZFC and you currently don't get that on the Z50. Now, we don't actually know if there's a new processor in this camera, it being somewhere between 18 and two years newer than the Z50, and perhaps whether a firmware update might improve the Z50. We simply don't know whether that's going to happen. So right now, the ZFC is the place you have to go to get that feature. And I just wanna talk about the backs of the cameras here. Nikon have done a little bit of extra work on the back of the ZFC and they've actually added a couple of buttons back in that the Z50 uh, does not have. The play button's up here, as is the rubbish bin button. And from my perspective, this makes it more like the Z6, Z7 experience. Those buttons are up there as well. And I prefer the button layout here on the back as it's closer to that experience. The Z50 is somewhat more cut down. And the play button and the rubbish bin button have been moved over here. And the buttons that have been removed are those zoom in, zoom out buttons, which end up being touch buttons on the screen. So I prefer the ZFC on the back. And perhaps a deal breaker for some is this little feature here. Is this the only Z camera to have a flash? I think it is. Now, I don't use flashes anymore. I might use a flash like this maybe once a year. And that's fine. Some people love a flash, some people need a flash. And this is, it's also actually a great way to trigger remote flashes, which m might be something that happens every now and again. So if you want a flash, the ZFC does not have one. It's as simple as that. Of course, they both have hot shoes and you can certainly trigger flashes through using remote triggers or another flash unit on top. I think flashes are probably being used in general a little bit less by the mass populace simply because higher ISOs just continue to get better as well as having stabilized lenses means that you can work in pretty low light. But it can get so dark that even that doesn't work and a flash is the only way forward. If a flash is important to you, the Z50 is the way to go. Now I want to talk about another internal difference which I think is fabulously important and very much a fundamental is the fact that the ZFC when it's plugged in via USB and you've got the appropriate charging device, brick, battery, whatever, it will power the camera whether it's on or off. So in essence you're in a tethered style mode and you can shoot continuously via that power as long as it's not interrupted. Of course, you'll fall back to the battery if it's interrupted. I think this is a fantastic feature to have. I believe I'll probably end up getting a ZFC at some point and replacing my Z6 and making this my studio camera or my live stream camera that just sits there permanently and you always know you're gonna have power. And it doesn't matter what the state of the battery is, it's always going to work. And in thinking about that and looking at that, I've purchased a USB-C cable which has a right angle. And the beauty about having a right angled USB-C cable is it doesn't obscure much of the screen. And so you can still use the screen, be tethered, and essentially run for as long as you like. So I love the fact that the ZFC has this feature, the Z50 does not. And one comment about the Z50, and I don't know yet about the ZFC, is it does run on the smaller battery and it doesn't last for a super amount of time compared to the Z6, Z7 and all of those other cameras. And with this style of setup, it feels quite safe and quite comfortable and you could potentially leave your camera charged 
for long periods, even while you're using it with this sort of plug. So I think that's a great way to go. Another thing that the ZFC offers is the capacity to have extended shutter times, which has been added to the newer firmware updates in the Z6 II and the Z7 II. This is something that's appreciated for people who want to go beyond 30 seconds and don't want to be in bulb. And finally, the price. Of course, it's always going to be most expensive right now. And it is more than the Z50. And because you're ultimately getting a similar sensor and a similar photographic outcome, it might be for some hard to justify that extra premium for something that's similar. But I do think there's enough changes, there's enough advancements in the ZFC from my perspective, which include USB-C, the fact that the camera will run off a battery indefinitely, the flippy screen, and the extended shutter speed. These are things that are actually fundamental to some of my use cases, and they might be fundamental to some of yours. And if it's simply a matter of that, that you just need that extended battery life, well, that is a binary choice. I need the extended battery life, so I'm going to spend the extra money. And then, of course, there is the aesthetics, and that comes down to your heart and your mind, and that is up to you. It's your choice. So there you go. There's a brief comparison between these two cameras from a technical perspective, for example, from an image quality perspective, video quality perspective, we do expect them to be the same. I will get out there and do more testing once lockdown is done. Please let me know in the comments below, which way would you go? The Z50 or the ZFC, which would you do? Absolutely fantastic to see you here today. If this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and like. It is so important for the video to help it get out there. Now, I have extended the calendar offer until the end of this month. Because we're in lockdown, I can't go to print, and so I just thought, well, I may as well extend it, and I can add more names in there of any people who'd like to do that. So, if you would like your name in every single copy of the 2022 calendar, you have until July 30th to get your order in at my website, mattirwin.com. Fantastic to see you. I'll see you soon. Which one am I gonna take? Let's go.